go out there and get yourself, you know, because it's you can't cheat for success. And a lot of right. people want to cheat for success. You can't cheat. The I, 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 universe ain't gonna allow you. There's rules, and 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 because you gotta go through certain things. And if you don't go through them, you can't skip them. It's gonna come and kick you in the butt. It's gonna come and kick you in the butt. So you have to go through that, right? You have to go through certain things. That's why people who win the lottery, most of them go broke because they haven't gone through certain things in mm. order to maintain that. Right. So they have to go. You have to go through certain things. You know, there was a point where even me, I'd be like, damn, I should study some business in books and stuff like that. And it's because I always look and say, Sir, if I get a, a long sum of money, I really don't know what to do with it. So you right. got to educate, <laughs> educate. And even just doing filmmaking has allowed me to to budget money because I have to budget. I'm 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 budgeting 40, 100 people. And I remember like my job. Malik's first job podcast here to answer any questions that y'all ask. Financial literacy and resources, parents and young people becoming bosses, CEOs, future leaders, entrepreneurs, conferences and boardrooms getting sponsors secured. If you want generational wealth, Brooklyn's own current fill up with information to help. Malik's first job podcast. Malik's Malik's podcast. Brooklyn's own current fill up. Current current fill up. Malik's first job podcast, podcast, pod, podcast, Brooklyn Zone, Kerwin Phillip, Generation Wealth. All right, peace, everyone. How you doing? This is Kerwin Phillip again with another episode of the Malik's first job podcast, where we focus in on leadership, entrepreneurship, and financial literacy for parents and teens. Today, we have um, a great guest, the good brother, Demarai Denaran, founder of Denaran Films. He's going to speak to us today about, you know, his journey into filmmaking, as well as some new products and projects that he has coming out. So what's going on, brother? How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. You know, it's, it's good. Good being here. And um, just keep pushing. I'll just keep pushing just to finish, um, you know, I think the third or fourth premiere. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. All right. So for those people who are in the back of the room, they have mm -hmm. no idea who you are. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, so my name is Demaraye Deniran. I'm a I'm a filmmaker, independent filmmaker, self-taught filmmaker. So I didn't go to film school or anything to um, learn filmmaking. I'm just a creative person, and um, and um, been behind the camera since I was ten, like in my youth club, camera, audio recording equipment, you know, like four track studio when I used to rap and stuff. And um, so I've always been filming. I've always been filming. People usually knew me always having a camcorder and document and stuff, right? And then 2009, I decided that I'm just going to focus on making narrative um, movies. So since 2009, I've been um, on this movie filmmaking um, journey. Um, I've, I've um, had um, one the first full feature I had was Reserve Notes. Then there was Diary of a Bad Man, which won many awards. And you can get both. You can catch both of them on, on um, Amazon. <coughs> Diary of a Bad Man is also on Tubi on the Dame Dash Studios. And I just finished shooting another full feature, of Genoma. So independent filmmaker, um, that's me for now. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. All right, so so what kind of sparked that bug for you to get into filmmaking? Um, the thing is, is that I have like a lot of talents. There's like a lot of things that I can do. And, mm -hmm. um, and when you have a lot of things that you can do, you tend to not do nothing. Because uh, at least for me, I was working on multiple things and not really, everything is just moving very slowly, very slowly. But what I did realize is that I'm also used to perform, I, um, rap and stuff. And I remember like making, doing an album with my ex-wife. And I remember we had 14 songs and it took 14, it, we had 14 weeks to do a song every week. And there was just a pattern where we had a game plan and we achieved it because we just focused on that one thing. And I also did like children's. I'm very high. I'm very um, adamant about education, children's education. So I was always um, doing children's learning products and stuff. So with my ex-wife as well, we had children's books and stuff. And I remember just focusing on that and achieving it, you know? So I realized that when you just focus on one thing, you can have multiple, but when you focus on one thing, you know, you can and execute that. You can, you can get what you want to get done. And accomplished. So I said, you know, with all these talents that I have, I need to find one 
that I can just focus on. And for me, filmmaking kind of umbrellaed a few other talents. So I can put all those um, those talents, a few talents under one umbrella, filmmaking. So I could write. I can also teach because I, I, I used to, you know, like teach history, you know, like, you know, black history and religion and stuff like that. So it mm -hmm. enabled me to also teach and communicate with people. And I saw what I saw with film, <laughs> I saw that, um, because I came from a, a conscious, you know, a, you know, a conscious arena, or you know, from that conscious world. And what I saw that we were lacking in the in the film industry. That's for my view is that we weren't there. And I said, um, and I, you know, I had a friend that, you know, <laughs> I won't mention his name, but he wanted us to, you know, his plan was like, let's go to, into the conscious um, circuit and do lectures because we can dominate. And I began to do it. I was getting ready to do it, then I, I fell back and I was looking at everybody, all these conscious teachers and up there, and I was like, they don't need me here. I need to play, place myself somewhere where I can be more effective, where I can reach the world and not be so okay. pigeonholed, right? And so I was like, filmmaking allows me to have conversations with people. And filmmaking <coughs> is a, it's a tool. Not only is it a tool, it's a weapon. Right, filmmaking is a weapon. Education is a weapon. Music is a weapon. Most of you know, we you know, a lot of times people don't know realize that warfare doesn't just mean guns and bullets and bombs. There's tools of war, and film is film is definitely a war tool because it changes people's perspectives and it changes how people think. And it's important for me to put out images that we can look at and change our perspective on how we see ourselves, especially the younger generation that's behind us, they have to see a different image. And, see, you know, because, you know, one of the biggest, um, um, or one of the most powerful levels of intelligence is actually imagination, right? Because imagination is what got us the car, the plane, the computer, all the things we see us see around us, it was somebody's imagination. So if we can allow our generations behind us to imagine themselves differently, right? Mm -hmm. They will manifest, they'll manifest different things because they see different things. Right, right, right. Okay, cool. That's, that's, that's pretty deep right there. Mm -hmm. So so I guess, you know, the images, so what images are you trying to, 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 to bring forth that, that aren't being shown in society today or, or in, the, in the media that we see today? Okay, so for instance, like, <laughs> Diary of a Bad Man, right? When people, when I started putting that, when I was putting that one and trying and promoting it, mm -hmm. I was getting, you know, black folks were attacking me. They were like, "Oh, we don't need this thing." Another, another movie. That's all. They, they'll be like, "That's all black people know is gangster movies." And I said to them, "Well, it's a positive movie." And they were just like, mm -hmm. "How? How? How? How can a gangster Diary of a Bad Man be a positive movie?" I said, it's, right. "It's positive." And people who knew me, right? I was like. You know, I'm ashamed of you who know me because you know my mind. <laughs> so you should know there's something, right? And so right. when people watched it, you know, it premiered first in Jamaica. I was there in Jamaica and the Jamaicans were like unfolded and they were just like, you know, because they thinking like, hey, who is this person? Who is this non-Jamaican guy coming to a, a Jamaican-based movie? Is he making us going to look bad? Because that's what that's what I was being attacked with was by Jamaicans online. Like this boy mm -hmm. want, want us to make, want to make us look full full and, you know, but when it played, I got a standing ovation, and and they said it took a non-Jamaican to tell the right story. And then when it was in the Jamaican Gleaner, they said Diary of a Bad Man breaks the stereotype. So I took I took the gangster because what I what I saw was that whenever we did gangster movies as blacks, it was senseless. It was just had no substance. It had no there was no morals. There was really no morals in the story. It just had senseless. But when I looked at Godfather, when I look at these. Italian gangster movies, it's some honor, it's prestige. It's like it's like you even forget they're gangsters. It's like okay, yeah, they're gangsters, but there's a there's a reason they still, you know. And ours, we just we just look like senseless, you know, senseless thugs. So I wanted to give a different character, and people were, and I and I did it that way as well because I said, you no, know, let me set the standard. Let me let me set a standard that when other filmmakers want to do gangster black gangster movies, they can follow mm -hmm. my lead. You know, because gangster movies are not going anywhere. You can't no. force people to watch a certain genre that they don't, they're not interested in. So I said, like, a person who might be interested in Diary of a Bad Man may not be necessarily interested in Ojanoma. So how do I talk to that person? I got to come in their image and come give, give them what they want so that they can learn to, you know, 
what would I, you know, come come to give them? So I'm I'm talking right. in their language, and so there's a lot of I always put consciousness in my in my stuff. So uh, you know, you know, people appreciated the conscious information in there, you know, because right. people, are, you know, they just don't want to be preached to, but they, right. you know, they they love the Diary of a Bad Man story. So my my whole thing is to flip, is to flip the um. What you think things are, I, mm -hmm. I like to turn it upside down. So even like with the making of a slave, which is another movie that um, I, I, I'm planning to one day shoot. I have the trailer up on my on my um, YouTube page, which is black slave owners and white mm -hmm. slaves. And you know, I got I, you know, I, I look at the comments, and you got people who thinks that there's people there's a section of people who think it's a revenge type movie. There's mm -hmm. and that's the black. There's blacks who think, yeah, the revenge movie. Yeah, I'm, I'm here for it. And then you have the whites who think like it's a revenge movie. And it's like, yo, you, you, you guys, you know, and they, they back and forth, back and forth. And there's a few people who actually see it for what it is, right? Okay. They see it for what it is. And um, and you know, so I leave people to I leave people to 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 go with their own interpretation of what my art mm -hmm. form is. But when the movie is done, then people, you know, those who are uh, who I have a, a open, intelligent mind will see what the movie is, but there's still going to be people who are going to block that and still see it for whatever they want to see the movie as. But there's a message in the movie. There's a there's a vital message, and it's it's a message that needs needed to be out years ago, right? And mm -hmm. and even like as, as I see the world spin today, it's more and more needed. It's more and more needed. Um, you know, the white the white slaves just makes people pay more attention. And then you pay attention to the story and it makes you pay attention to the things that's happened in the story and how it relates to society today. And so now that I have, um, and one of the reasons, again, that I got into filmmaking was also because I wanted to tell stories that the entire family can watch, right? Because I wanted to get into the minds of our children. But it was very difficult for me to write family-based movies. I just couldn't do it. It just was, it was, I couldn't do it. But after I spent like a year and a half trying to raise money for the making of a slave. I was trying to raise 500,000, right? Mm -hmm. It put me in the business aspect of filmmaking. So my mind was all in, in the was in the left hemisphere, just dealing with logic and business. And that was tough because I couldn't do anything creative. There was no room for create, creative stuff for a year and a half. And the moment I finished doing it and learning how to do the business plan, it's like it's like it's like I was doing weights on my in my brain, my brain. I felt the shift in my brain. I felt the the the, mm. the change. And at, at the end of that, old Janome was born, and it was like I could do it. I, I know, I know now how to write it. I know how to write those stories now. Right, right, right. So was um, the Diary of a Bad Man was that your first film? No, the, my first film was called Kush. I, I never put it out. I never put it out. One day I'll put it out. And um, I always say to people, is like I'm extreme. I'm an extreme person. So when I started filming, you know, people say, you know, do a short film, do this, right? Some mm -hmm. short pieces. I just jumped into the deep end and I did a feature. I, it started okay. up as a short and it, then it ended up being an hour long, right? Okay. And I, that was my that was my film school because I learned a lot with that. I learned a lot with doing that first movie, a lot. So one day I'll put it out. I just I just um I'm in it. I just don't like I don't like how I am in it because I can see my I don't I didn't trust the um the person on the camera. I'm very particular who's on the camera. And although my right. friend, he's a, he's a camera guy. He works, you know, he went to film school and mm -hmm. he, um, and he um, works on Hollywood sets. It's just, um, I, you know, I'm particular in how I want my things captured and he doesn't capture it the way. And so I, on, on, when he, while he's on the camera, I could see myself wondering, like, is he getting this thing right? And I can see it for myself. I can see it. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, I just don't like my performance in it, but I'll put it out one day. It's, um, yeah. it's, it's an interesting piece. And it's still, and that's, and, and it's still better than a lot of stuff that still comes out today. Like my first project is better than, you know, I just had, I just had the gift on how to shoot well and my cinematography, wow. how I understood it. Wow, wow. So I guess, you know, so starting out, how did you get like all your equipment like, did you have a team already before you got started? How did how did you? No, I don't. Have, I don't yeah, I didn't have no team. Um, there's there's a lot of things that I shot really just by myself, so like me on the camera and me doing the mic. I have a, a mic stand, and uh, do the mic, and then um, I get some of the actors who was on board. I'd be like, oh, can you do mic? And it had different people doing the mic, but none of them were were good at doing it. None of them okay. was good. So it caused me like 
the mic, everybody knew like the mic person is going to get yelled at, like how to yell at the mic person. So <laughs> people became afraid to touch the mic. And then one day my wife was driving by when, when we were shooting the reserve note. And I was just like, uh, you can hold the mic for me. So I do the mic. And so she came and she did the mic and mm -hmm. she was good. And so kept in training her and she, she was, start, she, so it was like me and her doing the mic. So uh, for the most part, it was just me and her. So Diary of a Bad Man was me and her. Right, I, yeah. I did. I just, I just wore multiple hats, and so the actors, right. So I've never been on a, on another set before, another film set before. And mm -hmm. there's a part of me that wanted to be on the on a, a film set. I just wanted to see how. So I've never experienced that. And right. one of my actors, um, Douglas Robs, um, he was like, he was like, listen, you, you're not missing nothing. He says you're, you're actually doing it. You're not missing anything, right? You're, you're actually doing it. Right, and I was like, "Yeah, I just wanted to see." Right, and then one of the other actresses, Latoya Grant, um, she's also in Diary of a Bad Man, one of the cops. She was just like, she was on some, I don't know if it was a PBS uh, situation, and she says there was literally. She says you're literally doing the job of thirty people. She says wow. like thirty people, you're doing the job of thirty people, you know. So they see me in action. I wish, I wish I could have had behind the scenes. For the mm -hmm. earlier days, for the, the reserves, no so diary for Batman, so people could actually see me in action. I probably look like a madman, right? But they could see me in action, accomplishing what I had to do. And um, even like sometimes when I'm filming, right, I'll be like thinking, I'll be, I'll be in this self-talk, thinking, especially when it's new actors. I'll be like, mm -hmm. do I look like I don't know what I'm doing to them? I, because to me, it, it feels like it probably looks because my stuff is. I'm an editor, so when I'm filming, I'm also editing. So I'm not really wasting time because I know, okay, that I can edit, I can do this. And I'm editing while I'm, I'm filming. So I always wonder, are these, are they looking at me like I'm strange or like, are they on the, a bad product? But they love me. I have to, you know, like actors like working me and they always, they'd be like, yo, if you got anything else, they enjoy working with me. And then my name starts moving around the circle where people are like, um, yeah, they, um, they want to work with me and they've seen and they see they've seen the, the stuff and the level of my the quality of my stuff so it was um you're getting cameras and stuff i got my camera um first camera was um first camera i got was this sony f87 or something like that it was a camcorder but it was um two thousand dollars but then it wasn't okay. it wasn't good it, it, it just lacked a lot of stuff and as soon as i had that a few months later <clears throat> i'll be on youtube and i'll see people having this cinematic capture with their cameras mm -hmm. i didn't know how they were getting it right and it was like a they were like a, a canon 7d and stuff like that, these dslrs and i wasn't understanding what dslrs were at that time I'm like are they sure that's a photography camera and then i began to understand all oh, the dslr and i was like oh, i could have bought that instead and then when a tax return came i got my dslr and a zoom audio recorder and a, and a road mic the road mic might have been about 150 dollars and I used that. I think I used that mic to make. I used that. I used the road, the road mic, which was one hundred fifty dollars. Um, the audio capture was like two hundred dollars. The mm. camera was maybe. Uh, I might pay seventeen hundred dollars for it, right? Okay. And that is and that is what I shot reserve notes with. And I was told at that point, right? I was told at that point you can't you can't shoot a full feature with a DSLR. So people who go to film school, that's what they were telling me. Right. You can't shoot it. And I'm just like, why not? If I could shoot a scene with this camera, mm -hmm. then I could shoot multiple scenes that make up a movie. So I'm like a child. Like when you say you can't, I'm just like, why not? Right? right. And um, so I was able to shoot. I was able to shoot, to make that movie with um, with um, those, that equipment. <laughs> and then, you know, then um, I was, um, I had a brother, a brother called Zoza, Zoza, um, Rocky. And um, I got to a point where I said, you know, I need to get more equipment. The Black Magic camera had come out. They were they were like innovative, and now they were now changing the industry. There was one of those companies that you know made affordable cameras for independent filmmakers like myself. And I, so I got the um, I was I said I need a, I need five thousand dollars, and I made this decision that I'm not gonna go in my pocket anymore to get. Okay. Oh, and when I got the seven D. It was at the point where I was borrowing before I got a 7D. My friend I was living with, right? He had a 7D. Like he's an extreme guy. He would buy project um products, right? And then, mm -hmm. like he's a photographer today, right? For two weeks he's hard photography. He got all the equipment and then he puts it down. 
and he lose focus and he goes to something else. So I was like, can I use your camera? <coughs> can I use your camera? Right? And he was mm -hmm. like, um, yeah, so I was using his camera and he had a nice lens with it. He had a, like, um, it was an L series Canon lens and that's what I was using before I got mine. So I was right. using, using that. I think I used that to shoot um, Kush, Sex Vacation, that is Sex Vacation, the web series. And then we knew I was moving from him. I was I was leaving, and I told him that, oh, you know, can I come and you know I'm gonna you know, you know he was acting weird after a while, and like mm -hmm. he wanted these cameras. Like we used to live together. And I don't know. I really don't know why. He mm -hmm. like the the weirdness, but he was like, oh, he needs to see the camera back, right? I said, okay, I still got one more project to shoot, right? So can I come? Even though I'm moving out, can I come and get the camera and bring it back? And he's like, yeah, cool, cool, cool. That's no problem. I said, alright, thanks. And so when it came down to um moving out, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, the camera's going to need it, right? I'm saying, oh, you know, i got a project to shoot. And he's like, yeah, he, he, need, he need a camera back, right? I said, oh, okay. And then he changed, he tried to change his mind, and I was like, okay, it's okay. Now, let me, I'll, I'm going to go and buy my, um. oh, it wasn't the camera, so I had bought the camera, he had the lens. It was his lens okay. I was using. I was like, okay, I'm just going to go and buy um, a lens, right? Because his lens was $1,600. Now, when I went to go and buy the lens, the lens was now, um, it was a new version of the lens and it was twenty four hundred dollars. I was like, oh wow. right. And I um it was a tax return, but I'm moving and I need X amount of months rent. And so that two thousand that two thousand four hundred dollars was to be like backup rent because you know we're move we're moving my whole family, you know, we're moving into into to the Bronx. And I was just like, I said to my wife, Dan, you know, should I get this? And she was just like, Well, she know she said, I know you that if you buy equipment, you're gonna use it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I, it was a thing of like, you know, you want to have the backup of rent. But I chose to get the lens, right? <laughs> I chose to get the lens. And and that lens paid me, you know, it bought back money. Right. <laughs> it bought back, it, it bought it back. back. So it was the right, it was the right decision. It was the right, right. decision. And then so the, the Black Magic camera was now the new camera to, to get. Um, cinem it was a cinematic camera, um, 2.5K um, resolution. And mm -hmm. it was uh, twenty five hundred dollars. Okay. So I said, I need to get equipment, but I'm not going to go in my pocket no more. Right. Any money, any equipment that I need to get is going to come not from my pocket. I feel like. And okay. then three days later, I was speaking to a brother, um, Jafar Amin, and he's like, "Yo," um, he said, "Like, yo, you speak to Rocky. Rocky will, um, will invest." I was like, "Word." So I told him I needed five thousand. Just drop an agreement. I said, "I need five thousand to shoot." You know. To buy equipment and stuff and he was like okay and he he gave it to me and he was like do you need more i can give you more money and i was like no i just need five thousand now i know some people will take more than what they need but i'm not that it's like no i, I need five that's all i need right and since then since then i haven't really dipped in my pocket to to buy any um cameras it's like it really comes from the stuff i'm doing Malik's first job, Financial Principles for Teens, is an excellent resource to get your children started on understanding the basics of financial literacy. This book, which is set in Brownville, Brooklyn, about a young man who gets his first job and then shortly thereafter sits down with his dad to learn how to manage his money. There are several topics that are covered within this work, such as paying yourself first, disciplining your spending, knowing the difference between an asset and a liability, creating multiple sources of income, as well as the importance of being charitable. So again, if you wanna get your children started on understanding finance and becoming responsible adults, we highly recommend that you purchase the book, Malik's First Job, Financial Principles for Teens. So please visit maliksfirstjob.com to get more information. Peace. Yeah. You know, okay. it came. And now, and 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 I've been um, not having no production team for the longest. Now, when it's only like I worked with. Um, you know, one one thing I have to say is that you have to invest in your in your in what you're doing. And mm -hmm. what I see is that filmmakers. I, I know a few filmmakers who call themselves filmmakers, but they're not willing to invest. There are a lot of filmmakers that go to school. This is what I've seen, and I can't say all, but a lot of them that go to school always want to borrow other people's equipment. Okay. They don't want to invest in their own equipment. I don't borrow my equipment now, right? I don't borrow anyone's equipment because you know, it, because I don't want to borrow mine out. 
you know right. the guy i live with i borrowed his but you know on this on this basis that if i break his lens i'm buying him a brand new one right right i'm not getting it repaired i'm gonna give him money to get a brand new one so if you borrow my stuff and you break it you have to buy me a brand new one i don't want it to be repaired buy me right. a new one now when you go to buy a new one there might be a different version that costs more are you willing to do that i'm willing to do that so i won't borrow your stuff mm -hmm. i have my own stuff so by a lot of filmmakers i see they're not they're not willing to invest in their own stuff and they're always looking for the best camera and there's never the best camera it's just the camera that you the camera is a tool and it's how you want to use it it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if it's an iphone you can you can use it effectively okay okay so what would you say was the budget you know for like let's say let's look for example um you said uh, reserve notes. Mm -hmm. That was, that was you know, the first, like, yeah. pretty much one of the first features. What was your overall budget to put that to put that project out? If you um, were asking me how much you spent, it was it was like it's like either two hundred fifty or three hundred fifty. That's it. Wait, two hundred fifty dollars or two hundred fifty thousand? Yes. No, two hundred fifty. Two hundred fifty dollars to put that movie out. Yeah. To put it and anyway, what, anyway, what about um? Uh, what's the next one? The the Diary of a Bad Man. What was the budget for that one? Eleven thousand. Eleven thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now that now now, the thing is right. I watch I watch filmmakers, and it's always filmmakers uh -huh. from school, right? It's always filmmakers from school that block themselves because I think in school they're taught that you need to have this, you need to have this. If you don't have these elements, you can't do the movie. So okay. me, I'm a I'm a wild lion in the in, in the in the in the wild. I'm not captive. Mm -hmm. So mine is like, I, I want to do, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. And I'm not worried about, a lot of times I'm not worried about the money. I don't put money as the first thing that I need. I put mm -hmm. what I need as the first thing. I was taught a long time ago, right? And a long time ago, in the spiritual order I was in, it was like, if you want a house, right? You say, I need 450,000 because I need to get this house. Now you're focusing on the money. Where you should be focusing on the house and say, "I want this house," mm -hmm. right? And the necessary things will the necessary things will come for what you want. The necessary right. things, and sometimes it's not money. Sometimes it's just um, access. It's cooperation with people. So, for instance, you might have to pay for a filmmaker that that blocks himself will say, "Oh, I need a thousand dollars to rent this this apartment or this warehouse." Not me. Right. I say, "I need this warehouse." How am I going to get this warehouse? I just, I just, I need this warehouse. Right, and you'll get it. Sometimes you get it for free, or you get it for very, very cheap, right? Because mm -hmm. warehouses, warehouses was one of the things that was said to me. Don't write those things into your script because getting a warehouse is going to cost you like three thousand dollars. You're not going to get it. But right. I take, I take, and I and I did that on my first movie with Reserve Notes. I did that, but then when it came to Diary, I was just like, no, I'm I'm writing. I'm going to write down what I want. I'm going to write it into the script. These are the things that I want, right? And right. I was able to manifest like most of most of those things either for free okay. or for a small budget. So with diary, I mean, with reserve notes, 250 or $350 um, dollars was just for renting of chairs and renting of a location. And that was mm -hmm. it. So using the bar, right? I think using the bar, I um, I think I may have got that for free because Douglas Robs, that was one of his friends or whatever. And they, right. when people see you doing stuff, sometimes people just like what you're doing. Right? right. They just like what you're doing this and they just want to help. They just, they just like the fact that, oh, this movie was shot in my um in my building or in my right. business and so mm -hmm. you just have to um what the word is network yeah. network right you know so don't always put money as the thing that you need i think money blocks people a lot of times because they just put in money instead of just putting the wants and need and then allowing the universe to guide them to where they to the to the place where they need you know and um, having mm -hmm. access people will say oh you know actors is going to cost too much for actors and stuff and it was a lady um, that I worked with called Naja Naja Ho, right? Mm -hmm. And she was she was in Diary. She was she was the girl girlfriend of um, Gully, to get the um, gangster Jamaican gangster. And she's yeah. a creative, very creative woman, very good, you know. And I remember because I used to pay for the um, actors. What else? I used to pay for their transportation, food, and stuff. And right. sometimes I'll just get actors that won't show up, or they show up late. You know, they were just like bad. And I'm telling her. And she was just like, get. She was like, get working actors, actors who are actually working, right? Get those. And mm -hmm. she, she was just like, you know, she don't offer nothing. <laughs> but you know, I, I offer them still. But she was just like, you know, 
she she doesn't she just gets them and this is the agreement if they agree and move on so what i what i did with actors we did a thing called um um defer payment okay now a lot of actors would be like oh defer payment means you ain't getting paid right and i just wanted to be different i wanted to be like well i want to be the first one that you know that they're able to i'm able to pay them through defer payment right mm -hmm. but a lot of actors if they a lot of actors they're looking for they're looking for work they're looking to be on the screen right they're looking to be able to build a reel so they will take the, the for a payment or even small payment because it's getting them on the um on on, on the screen and they can build their reel to get other other jobs because you know that's that's something that actors need and then i right. think what what happens is that when actors google me and they check my stuff out they say mm -hmm. Okay, he's worth to fit that way, you know. Because if I was an actor, I'd be disappointed because there's a lot of there's a lot of crappy projects out there. There's a lot mm -hmm. of crappy, you know. There's there's a lot of filmmakers, a lot. There's a lot. There's probably millions, right? But there's a lot of crap. That's okay. the truth. There's a lot of crap. So for actors, I feel like it's hard because you know they get projects and it's just be like, oh, this is terrible. But they need to. They need a real. You know, right. so when they come across somebody like me with um, a good um, with a good good skill sets, they mm -hmm. um, they're like, yeah, um, we're gonna stick and we, you know, and we negotiate, and they're okay with it. They're okay with, and they yeah. they're okay with how I treat them on set. You know, I treat them on set. So that was done with like, um, I paid for actors' food and and um, transportation. You know, yeah, reimburse transportation. And um, and we got it done, and they were all enthusiastic, and we did it. We did it over every, diary and reserve notes was done over the weekends, meaning that every weekend we would shoot. So those projects would take maybe like three months of shooting okay. every weekend, you know. Okay. Which was which was like, when I look at it, I'm like, you know, that stuff is crazy because at any time, if an actor falls out, mm -hmm. something happens to the actor, the whole project can go to waste, right? Because you know, but we you know it's good having people who are dedicated. And then if you're a good leader, and people respect mm -hmm. you, they the actors that they will definitely go for, above and beyond for you. Right, right, right. So, so okay, boom. So now you've let's say okay, you're going through the process. You know, you've you've done the filming, you've done the editing, and the project is ready and ready to go. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the biggest things with like with film, even with I guess any type of entertainment. Is yeah. the distribution right? Oh is yeah, getting getting you know eyes on your projects or getting the ears to listen to your projects. Yeah. So and I've seen it. I guess I see that you're able to get your work on Amazon, mm -hmm. on Tubi, these different streaming platforms. Yeah. What's that process like to yeah get it, get it on, on those bigger platforms? It's, it's it's it was like um okay so with getting on Amazon the first um thing I used was um so when it was reserved notes I got that on like Vimeo. I think yeah, it was just Vimeo. I did it right, and it's it's always been like you said. It's it's very a hard task to get that right. It's very very hard. And so Amazon, there was a company called Distributor, and they would you know it was they they were like revolutionized the um, distribution thing, and it was good for a moment where you paid them, you can pay them like you can you could pay them like maybe there was like a five thousand dollar deal thing that you can do or ten thousand, mm -hmm. and they can get you on all platforms right. You know, potentially, right? Mm -hmm. Netflix was always the hardest, but they can get you if you pay. So I just that time I could afford this to Amazon, so I paid them for Amazon. I was okay. on Amazon, right? I got one check from them, which was like 180 for Direct okay. Bad Man, 180 dollars. But you could see the back, your back, your office, and you could see what your movie's doing. So I saw mm -hmm. at that time I had like 1100 dollars there, and I said, "What's that?" And they was like, "Oh, we get back to you on that." I said, "Explain, like I'm not understanding, like." And then I see it go up to like ten thousand, and I think the highest I think it may have gone like to thirteen thousand. Wow! And I asked them again, like, "What is that? How comes I'm not seeing no payments and stuff?" Right? And they were like, wow. "Oh, we'll get someone to explain it to you." <laughs> nobody explained it to me. Asked one more time, the new person. They were like, "Oh, we're new." Nobody explained it to me. And then a few months later, the company's bankrupt, and wow. a lot of filmmakers are out of their money. There was filmmakers that didn't get paid. Their wow. stuff and this, yeah, it was a whole thing. You know, there was a, a there's still like one filmmaker paid has the I think FBI investigating them, right? Mm -hmm. And so now my movie is on, um, you know, 
is then I'm not getting I'm not getting no pay from that. And then um Amazon Amazon a lot of filmmakers don't realize but Amazon I don't know if it's, they do it now but then mm -hmm. I was able to re-upload it myself to Amazon. Okay. Amazon allowed filmmakers to now put it them up themselves. So I was able to put it up there myself and I and I was like damn I got all these reviews and this one now I'm putting up a new one but and I you know, let Amazon know that I have the title up already. Is it possible that I can keep the reviews and everything there? They didn't respond back to me, but eventually they merged the two together. And so I they kept the reviews and the stars <coughs> that I had achieved. And so that was there. So, and real, so, quick. so real quick, was there a fee for you to do it yourself through Amazon? No, there was no fee. Okay, so, no so fee. any filmmaker, could, could, I guess yeah. for right now, they can go to Amazon. Yeah, and put it up there. But now okay. Amazon, what Amazon's paying out is like not as good no more. It's like you know they, you know, nobody understands really their algorithms and how they do things, right? Okay. But then you know your, you know, it depends. Like you know, like the smaller guys, they may not, you know, they may not get. During the pandemic, there was a lot coming through. There was a lot coming okay. through, through during the pandemic. There was like highs and stuff. And then you know, like, and then you know, with the two B thing was, um, you know, Dame Dash had the thing with the two B. I said, you know what? Let me let me check this out. Let me test this out with Dame Dash, right? So I submitted it, and then he's um the person that deals with um with um the distribution with Dame Dash. He actually knows me, and he um came to I think yeah he came to Die with Batman premiere, and he knows a okay. few of the other actors that I know. So when he saw my submission, he was like, he called me, and he was just like, oh yeah, I, I saw your um that you had submitted um mm -hmm. for the um and he said that's good because he says like you know you know Tubi's a good um spot for independent filmmakers, right? And um, and so he, um, you know, so that was good. And, and, you know, like, and it's not so bad, you know, it's not so bad. It's, you know, like um, I've, I've had one payment from there and it's not bad. It's not bad, okay. you know. And um, so to see like, you know, you know, I might see like the four payments and then it should be good. I, th I think if it, from the first payment I got, if it continues like that and better, you know, I got to put more advertisement in though, because I was advertising, mm -hmm. but I got to put like, you know, I was putting some advertising, but I got to take like maybe, put like maybe a thousand dollars and just do, you know, the marketing online marketing. Yeah. And um, and if I can get what I just got, then I definitely will be able to. Because the actors, they they did um the fur payment on that, so okay. you know, so I've been able to begin paying right. You know, yeah. so they're probably gonna see this right. And be like, hey, go. I'd be like, now everybody with the fur payment, there's an order in how you pay people. So mm -hmm. um. You know, I saw I've um, distributed some portions of the money to certain um, a certain actor, right? So as it comes in, then I'll, you know, if I can keep on that keep on that level, then I can just eventually pay everybody um, yeah. their deferred payment. Okay. And has has Dane give you any feedback, like direct feedback on the film itself? No, I haven't. I haven't even um, met Dane Dash. I think I probably would have met him yesterday because my, the, the movie was playing at the Newark Film Festival under Dane Dash. And so okay. I was supposed to be there, but I had my premiere happening in right. um, in New York. So, yeah. Okay. So in time, in time, I, I guess I, I will um, I, I will meet up with, um, with um, Mr. Dash. It's funny because me and him are very, we're very similar. Um, mm -hmm. I, I call myself, I'm like, because my, um, my uh, nephew always says, like, you and Dane Dash are similar. Like he's been talking to me for years, right? My nephew, not, you know, I just call him my nephew because I've been speaking, I've been month with him since he's 18, 29, right? And um, so you and Dave Dash were similar. And I was like, yeah, we are. I'm just like the, I think I'm more like the quieter version, the more calmer version of Dave Dash. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. so I understand Dave Dash. I understand, like a lot of people don't understand him, but I understand him because we're actually very, very, we're very, very similar in, in our thought patterns, how we think about stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. So it'd be interesting actually meeting him. How how that would go, you know. <laughs> but I'm the common version, so I I I probably more listen. I'm more I'm I'm right. you know, I'm I probably more listen than. Okay. Yeah. So so throughout your your, your, your filmmaking journey, mm -hmm. what has been what has been the biggest challenge that you've encountered? The biggest challenge really is um is really getting your stuff out to the masses on a large level, right? The okay. biggest challenge is also funding is the biggest challenge. That's the biggest challenge, getting funds and um and figuring out, okay, how I'm gonna shoot this and you know, I I figured it out, but um, you know, at some point, you know, at some point now for some of the stuff I need, I know I'm gonna need some large funds, you know. Right. So 
But I don't allow that to stop me. I still put the stuff out. I still make it happen. I still make it work. Okay. Okay. And then I guess on the flip side, what has been the biggest success or the biggest win that you've had so far on the journey? The biggest win, <clears throat> I would say like Ojanoma is to me is my biggest win. Okay. Right? My biggest win. One, because I was able to get an investor, <laughs> right? I was able right. to get that. And um, I, I, I think um, just the level of what Genoma is, how it, how that's how it is, right? I think that's mm -hmm. the biggest win so far because of how I shot it and the the level, the quality of it. Like there, there is like you'll sit and watch that and you feel you'll feel like a, a Disney like feel to that movie. You're gonna okay. feel like a Disney, and you're gonna look and be like like people see that and they like they think like like one guy he was just like. He's, he showed it to the trailer to his friend, and the trailer says, the guy says, your friend must have money because he saw the special effects, <laughs> right? But I don't right. have that money for the special effects because that's in-house. That's my son, my 15-year-old son doing that, you know? Wait, and, wait, so your 15-year-old son did the special effects for the yeah, most for the movie. project? Yeah, like, so at 12 years old, he was doing special effects briefly. Just He just uh -huh. briefly did some special effects, and that's where I saw, oh, you have the skill set. Right. <laughs> and then for Old Genoma, you know, he got... um boot camp on old genome because he had to now do it for three months like almost every wow. day he was on it because mm -hmm. he was at crunch time and so and when i wouldn't i don't allow excuses so when he was like oh he don't know how to do something i said figure it out you're gonna figure it mm. out and tell me that you don't know how to do it figure it out it can be. right and then he'll come and show me oh i couldn't do this and i'll be like no Akmos, you're you're an artist so you know perspectives you know how to do that and then i'll come i said so you can't talk foolishness to me because i know how to do special effects too it's just mm -hmm. that I'm not doing it because I, I can't put my time into it. But he gets it from me because I do it, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, it's my DNA. I was doing special effects. So I know after effects, I know how to do, I know how to do it. I know how to do m most areas of film, like everything in film, I know, basically I know how to do. So if, mm -hmm. someone's, if someone's telling me something, I'll be like, no, that's not right. So I, I wouldn't allow him. And so I allow him to go through past the threshold and break through where he's, he's nice with it and it's gonna get better. And nice. you know, at fifteen, no, you know, because if I didn't have him, then I would, you know, be looking to get someone to do it. And that would cost a lot. They're going to charge right. me a lot, you know. And that's why I was saying to him, I was like, you know, you can you can freelance the stuff that you have, you know, you can really mm -hmm. freelance and make a lot of money with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Today is a great day to start your own podcast. Whether you're looking for a new marketing channel, have a message you want to share with the world or just think it would be fun to have your own talk show. Podcasting is an easy, inexpensive, and fun way to expand your reach online. Buzzsprout is hands down the easiest and best way to launch, promote, and track your podcast. Your show can be online and listed in all the major podcast directories like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Products, and more within minutes of finishing your recording. Podcasting isn't hard when you have the right partners, and the team at Buzzsprout is passionate about helping you succeed. Join over 100,000 podcasters already using Buzzsprout to get their message out to the world. Let's create something together. Follow the link in the show notes and let Buzzsprout know that we sent you, and that will get you a $20 Amazon gift card if you sign up for a paid plan and help support our show. Thank you very much. And let's be great podcasting together. Peace. All right. So, so let's let's get into that. So, let's talk about the, the new project. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, what is it about? You know, what's the okay. uh, so you know, what the story? The, the backstory of Old Janoma is that I oh, this is the second shooting of Old Janoma, meaning I shot I shot it before in Nigeria. Okay. Right, and I was tell people in Niger when I shot it in Nigeria, I was sabotaged by the um, wow. the, um the you know two individuals that you know that were um, in control of a lot of stuff, and they mm -hmm. sabotaged it by delaying the project and doing just a, a whole bunch of stuff. And I realized, okay, this this project is under attack. And, okay. But I still completed the movie, so I completed the movie, you know, through all of the attacks and everything. I I tell people it was like I was in, I felt like I was in Iraq, you know, I wow. lost a lot of weight out there because. I was sleeping like two, three hours almost every day, you know, mm -hmm. and lost my voice in the end because I had to shout at them. Like, 
I felt like I had to, like, they got me to the point where I wanted to fight. Wow. But I'm looking, I'm like, there's just too many people. I can't fight them all. <laughs> but right. I was at a point, and, you know, you'd see it on my Instagram, there's a clip where I'm, I'm yelling at them, like, yo, back off. Like, back off. If you're not supposed to be here, back off. Right? And I'm mm. really, because you had people just crowding the set, just, like, getting in the way. Like, there will be, like, you turn around, there's, like, 30 people. Every, and it's like, I don't need these people on my set. Like, it's like I had all these people on production set that they were just getting in my way. Most mm. of them were getting in my way and they weren't listening, right? Because I know that guy is telling them, do this. The, the, the customer is down all the way down there. And I said, you need to be nearby. So when I, when the actors need to change, they don't have to walk all the way down there. Right. They were taking long to change the clothes and stuff. And then when we got to the end, right? All of a sudden, miraculously, they could dress people in five minutes before mm -hmm. it was taking half an hour, 45 right. minutes to dress someone. I'm just like, okay, I see what it's saying. Oh, and I finished it. The movie, people thought like, and I told them that, I told them when, because I got to the point where I had shot certain scenes that I knew that I could even quit and finish the movie in America or somewhere else. You know, mm -hmm. that was my game. As I was shooting, I said, as long as I do this, as long as I shoot this, I don't need to shoot those other scenes of palace scenes. I even built a palace out there out of bamboo, a huge palace out there. I built, you know, a palace out there to the point mm -hmm. where the guys, they were like, no, it's theirs. I didn't build it. It's theirs. And, you know, the guy, the guy was like, he, he's one of the investors in the movie. I'm like, invest how? He said he spent money for the movie. Did you come to me and ask me to spend? I didn't tell you to spend no money. You know, right. So it's diabolical. It's, cra it's crazy because what I saw in Nigeria is that they watch these soap operas, right? Mm -hmm. And they act out the soap operas. So like, you know, like in Jamaica, right? In Jamaica, they used to watch a lot of Western, right? Mm -hmm. And so with Jamaicans, you know, and then you had the gunman, right? Mm -hmm. Imitating it, you know? And so I noticed that, you know, where people are, whatever they watching, whatever is influencing them, they right. act out. They actually act out, right? In Britain, we act out, we acted out a, 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 you know, a brutal, more brutal way of violence. Like it's all hands, knives and stuff like that. Where America mm -hmm. it was guns, it's Western as well. Guns, 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 right? And so in Nigeria, right. I w watch, they watch these soap operas. And so these guys were acting like the soap operas, you know, with <laughs> schemes. And I'm looking, I'm like, I can see what you're doing. And right. it's just like, this is weird. It was, it was really weird. So I, I got to the point where I told them like, ha, I have everything that I need for this movie. I can stop shooting right now and I can mm -hmm. still finish this movie elsewhere. But they they know he knows how much money I put in there. I put most of the money that was put in was my own money. I put over mm -hmm. I put about forty five thousand or more in there. And okay. um and that was my own money. <laughs> that was all my, my own money, you know. And um and um and so um I told them listen I can use what I shot even as a proof of concept. I can use it like like I can, like I, I'll scrap this project. But they thought I wouldn't, because all mm -hmm. they can, you know, they dealing with someone that's coming from outside of the country, right? And right. They, 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 they didn't take, they didn't grab the opportunity, and make use of it. They didn't understand mm -hmm. because. I, but I sat down with this individual and said, you know, what I want to do for Nigeria, right? <clears throat> and I was going to come to that part, Delta State, and and we were going to be a film hub right there, and we'll have movies right. coming out. They had, they had, they had the jewel right there. They had somebody mm -hmm. with knowledge, with know-how, that would change that industry and put them on top. But the greed, the yeah. greed was more stronger. And so I got back to New York, and then I started editing. And on the third day, I said, "This movie is not going to represent me. I don't want people to see this as my from diary to this. Although it looks, still looks better. It still looks good. It wasn't, but it wouldn't show my growth. And I was like, okay." I gotta scrap this, and that's how me and Dame Dash are. See how Dame Dash he scrapped his thing because, and you know, and my my, my nephew was like, he said, "You and Dame Dash can scrap stuff. I can scrap stuff and rebuild." So I said, "No, I'm scrapping it." I don't know how it was. It wasn't nice. I didn't feel good, right. right? I was just like, "Damn, like I really gotta scrap this." It's like, then I was like, "How am I gonna shoot this? Maybe I'll shoot it here in America, and maybe I get the actors and see if actors can work on deferred payment." Or I go to, back to Africa and shoot it, and just let Africa, the, those in Africa know that. Listen. We gotta redo this. I might not be able to pay you how much I paid you before up front, but mm -hmm. we gotta get this. And I was looking forward actually to shooting a third time because then I could really do everything that I wanted to do that I wasn't able to do. Right. So I wasn't I didn't right. mind it. But in my head is like, how do I explain this to the investor? <laughs> that would be the thing. Can I shoot it without the investor knowing and then come back and be like, okay, 
you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so three days later, after deciding that I'm not gonna keep it, my friend, my good friend called me three days later and he was just yeah. like, and I know this happens in three, just like with the 5,000, it was the third day. This was the third mm -hmm. day. And he was like, yeah. hey, he was like, yo, he, no, people call me Kush. And he was like, yo, Kush, you, you got any projects? Because um, I got a vest an investor. And I was like, what? He said, yeah. He said, you know, you're, like, you're good for like 100,000. And I was up to 100,000. I was like, what? He said, I think I just need 50, right? Mm -hmm. And because um, I can finish off because I already have pieces, I can just finish it off. And, um, but then when I looked at the project, I said, you know what? I can just really, really just redo this stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was, you know, I got more. I got like um, 75, but later we got more. So it was um, like 79,000, right? Okay. But it's more, actually more than 79,000 because all the money that I'm used still spending now is also part of the budget. So it's actually, and if I include what I got in Nigeria, I look at Nigeria as... Um, Project development, product development, right? <laughs> so that has to include that. So I say that the project costs one hundred and fifty thousand five hundred dollars. Okay, that's what, that's what I have to put it in, you know. Yeah. And um, so even from that seventy, the initial seventy five thousand that was given, you know, that enabled me to get um equipment, right? So mm -hmm. this is starting to say, I think like maybe thirty thousand went on equipment. Then you had flying the actors over had like four actors to fly over and then there was then this money that's going to be spent in the in zambia paying actors and locations and stuff like that right. it cost me $4, coming over i learned my lesson with that one because i thought it was going to be 1100 and the wait, wait, one second. wait real quick your, your audio went out how much did it cost to ship the stuff yeah, um, like you're saying how much everything costs for the but the audio went out for a second. <clears throat> okay, so for the for the equipment, I'm, I think I spent about thirty thousand on equipment. Okay. My new camera and stuff was like thirty thousand. Um, I can't remember how much it cost. There's a few thousand to get myself and the actors over there. Um, okay. Then you had my equipment that I was bringing. I thought it was going to cost eleven hundred to to take the equipment on the plane. It cost four thousand. That was round trip. And I was if I no. knew that, I would have. I would have not bought that amount amount of equipment, and um, right. but I know I know now. So that that mm -hmm. it cost it cost that. So and and then the money that that was used in in Zambia, we actually you know like I would have had like twenty thousand dollars left, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars left, which was supposed to be used for the marketing and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. that got used in Zambia, you know, we went okay. over. Yeah, so that got used, you know, and I was um, yeah, so it was um. You know, was able to do it, and, and you know, that faced difficulties shooting there, but not like what I faced in Nigeria. Nigeria, they just purposely, like, right. like talking on set. It was like cut, cut. I just, it was, it was crazy. I'm gonna do a movie about right. it, so I'm gonna still benefit from their foolishness and make a movie right. and call Nigerian right. Wahala, which Wahala is like nonsense and stuff. I'm, you know, I, no, this is what I say to people when, when, when someone does something to me as a filmmaker, or you do something to someone who's an author, or whatever, we can mm -hmm. use you to make money. We can right. use what you do to us to make money because I can tell the story. I can tell the story. Mm -hmm. I can put you in, in the, I'll put you in the movie. I'll make a movie and I'll right. get my money back through that movie. And that's what I'm going to do with that because it's going to be comedy and just wow. funny. It's funny, but it wasn't funny when it was happening. So like, Old Genoma was shot in, in Zambia. We completed it. What we had, to, what I had to face there, I was in the winter <laughs> season, which is um, June. And so it took, um, it took, um, we had to fight against time. Okay. Time. Yeah. So, um, and then when I when I came back to the US, my hard drive with the movie crashed. My backup drive crashed. Wow. And so the movie was gone. It was gone, and it took me two and a half weeks to get the movie back. I had to buy softwares. One software worked and got some of the stuff back, and then I had to get another software and do run it run it again. That one got some back, but I didn't get a hundred percent back the movie. You know, I didn't get everything wow. back. And um, there were scenes that were missing. You know, scenes there's things that's missing, and the end scene was missing. Wow. Not all the end scene, but 20 seconds of the end scene was missing. And that 20 seconds that was missing was holding the movie hostage. That means I couldn't finish the movie. There's, there was like no way, wow. absolutely no way to finish the movie because 20 seconds was missing. Right. So now I was like, do I fly all the actors back, which would cost me maybe $6,000? Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> I'm going to have to rent a place that, you know, it's going to cost. So I had to rewrite the ending slightly, which works actually. And it cost me a thousand dollars to do the 20 seconds. Wow. 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 <laughs> so wow. and then so and, and there was also a scene that I had to shoot here in, in, in the Bronx, 
right? I shot in the Bronx. Um, so you won't even know. You think it's in Zambia, but it was in the Bronx. <laughs> in the Bronx, um, Bronx River Park. I shot the oh, wow. scene there. Yeah. So, and the scene that I shot in Florida, you really won't know that it's in Florida. Even even my producer over in Zambia, he had to remind himself. He's like, I even forgot that was in America. Wow. You know? Yeah. Wow. Wow. You know, oftentimes, I guess when those obstacles come, you find a way to to, yeah. to move. Movie making is uh, movie making is problem solving. You're gonna have problems to solve. Like things yeah. don't go the way you want. Like I don't know. Maybe when I have the multi million dollar budget, mm -hmm. I think money does money will make it. I think what I've learned on this level is good because I've learned how to make. I know how to make movies with no money. Right. And now, I know how to make. Like if you gave me ten million dollars to make a movie, I know what to do. I know how right. to use that. I know how to utilize that money correctly without without going over budget and without, you know, <laughs> you know. I know how to utilize it correctly, right. and I think that's a it's a good thing to go through the the path that I went through because what uh -huh. I again when I see with people who who you know not hating on people who do film school, but it's just my experience with those in film school is that they they'll just throw money at things they're thinking and they they they're just not gonna it's not gonna happen. What I what I found out with um through actors, right? And one of the things they like about me is that I finish. I actually finish movies. They said a lot of independent movies don't get finished. I was like, what? They really? And they're like, yeah, they don't get finished. They don't finish it. Wow. And what's the biggest reason for that? Why they don't get finished? I, I don't know. I think, I'm, I'm going to assume like they ran out of time or ran out of funds. I think probably run out of funds and stuff okay. and don't get it done. But me, I'm going to get it done. Right. So right. even like my Chronicles of Bullethead, you know, I haven't just got time to finish editing, but it will be done. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to complete it. That's my, so they like that. They like right. that when they see, oh, he gets movies done. So I know they've, so that I see that they've probably been on projects and it's never been done. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. it's never gets done. So if you, if you have a message to give to like other independent filmmakers, mm -hmm. like what are some tidbits, some best practices that you would want to share with them? Um, I would say like you gotta you gotta keep shooting, you gotta keep working mm -hmm. on your craft. You gotta keep you gotta do your craft every day. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you're doing your craft every day is watching a YouTube video on filmmaking. Even stuff that I already know I watch. Right, is uh -huh. always always keeping yourself in in filmmaking. Right. If you're if right. you're just a camera person, then always practice shooting. If you're up, you do audio. Practice audio. If you're a writer, always write. You know, always keep yourself. Mm -hmm. Keep yourself active and keep yourself positive because um you know it's a hard industry and it's mm -hmm. only truly those who love if if you're doing it for money then you'll you'll quit right if you're doing it for money you're gonna quit right you're gonna quit mm -hmm. if you're an actor and you're just acting for money you're gonna quit right and i've had actors that one my actor that was on sex and occasion he was just a natural talent but he mm -hmm. was looking for like money like when's money right? and i'm like like it's, it don't work like that so, but you have to right. be consistent. You, if you love it, you'll be consistently doing. It. And to do film, you have to love it, and you, because it's crazy, you know. It's it's one of like it's like an, a very expensive hobby for right. people. Like people take it on as a hobby. It, it's expensive, but for me, it's not a hobby. It's a, it's what I do. Right. right. This is what I do. So it's not a hobby, but it's what I do. And it's like, I'm at a point where I could, I, you know, it makes you know, I can't quit. I can't stop. It's like I've, I've invested. I can't quit. I can't, I can't quit. It's like, that's ridiculous. Like, I like doing it. I like telling the story. So quitting is like out of, is out of the picture, <laughs> unfortunately. Right, right, right. So, so people that, that want to reach out to you and uh, get more information, well, where can they find you online? Um, Instagram, everything, everything is Denneron Films. Um, you can, even, you, also, you can also contact me on my website and just send me a message, uh, you know, at my website, just introduce who you are and stuff like that. Cause I get a lot of emails and messages you know and sometimes yeah. people it's a way there's a people just people just fail to present themselves correctly they really do you know if they, they fail to present themselves so present yourself correctly you know like people would just be like you know they might be like hey i'm not gonna answer to hey how you doing i'm not gonna answer to how you doing i want to be in your movie i'm not gonna answer that like if people say they want to be in my movie and you're not an actor and you just want to and you but you want a chance i'm not the person go out there and get yourself, you know, because you can't cheat for success. And a lot of right. people want to cheat for success. You can't cheat. The I, 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 universe ain't going to allow you. There's rules. And and because and, you got to go through certain things. And if you don't go through them, you can't skip them. 
it's going to come and kick you in the butt. It's going to come and kick you in the butt. So you have to go through that, right? You have to go through certain things. That's why people who win the lottery, most of them go broke because they haven't gone through certain things in mm-hmm. order to maintain that, right? So they have to go, you have to go through certain things. You know, there was a point where even me, I'd be like, damn, I should study some business in books and stuff like that. And it's because I always look and say, Sir, if I get a, a lump sum of money, I really don't know what to do with it. So you gotta educate, I gotta educate. And even just doing filmmaking has allowed me to to budget money because I have to budget. I'm 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 budgeting 40, 100 people. And I remember like my job, a person says, You're manager, you're a manager, like you're a manager, because you're <laughs> I'm, you're situating people. And but you know, I can I can take people because I also produce it. So I do the right. time schedule, I do all of that, I do the shoot schedule, and I'm putting place in people, okay, yeah, this mm-hmm. and I have to do scheduling. Right? right, so I know how to do that. Right, so if somebody else comes to do that, then I know how to do it. So if they if they playing, I know they're playing. I'll be like, no, 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 you're playing, right? But it's something I enjoy doing, though. I like doing this the shoot schedule. I like I like doing it, you know. Yeah. So I'll say to people that they just gotta stay. They 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 just gotta know why they're in it and stay focused in filmmaking and don't make no excuses. Don't don't make right. no excuses. Don't say I don't have a camera. I don't have to. You have your cell phone. Be creative and shoot with your cell phone. Like, I tell this to people in Nigeria, <coughs> filmmakers, they, they they always be like, oh, you know, they need this, they need that. I said, you don't need nothing. I said, I said, get yourself, you got a cell phone, shoot short films, shoot skits, and be consistent with them. You know, right. somebody's going to recognize you outside of your area, you're outside of Nigeria, wherever you are. Somebody's going to recognize it if you're consistent. You don't need, you don't even need to be polished. You're still, like money and violence. I don't know if you know that web series. Right, yeah. some of the people mm-hmm. on my on my on my on my team, Green Line, right? They're rappers, right? Those are their mm-hmm. people, right? right? Those are their people. But money and violence was successful. It wasn't. They didn't have the best cinematography. They didn't have the best actors, right? They didn't have a polished industry script, but they were consistent, right? And they had a team. They had a team. Everybody on their team was pushing that stuff, and they they had a team. They had a team that pushed. Right, so everything is on algorithms, right? So you gotta, you gotta, you know, push. And this, if if I wasn't doing film, mm-hmm. if I was, if I was just a regular person having a regular um, a social media account, you know what I would be doing? I would be pushing those who are like I'll be pushing my, my I'll be dedicated to pushing Malik's first first job, right? Mm-hmm. I share it from time to time, right? Right. And you share stuff from mine from time to time. But we understand, okay, we got our brand, so we can't, you know. But we, you know, we. We help each other, but there's people who don't do, ain't do none of that, right? And right. I wish they would look and be like, let me, let me dedicate to helping to just push their yeah. stuff, because people see you, they see you, friends and family, mm-hmm. they do see you, they, they, right. they do, they do, they see you, they do see you. Sometimes it's not out of spite that they're not helping; it's just that they don't understand. You know, mm-hmm. they don't, they don't understand. They don't, they're just not thinking. They're not right. thinking that they. We have this mentality that somebody else is going to do it. It's just like when it comes to voting, you think, oh, well, somebody else is going to vote, right? And right. then we we'll, we might complain about, this, you know, oh yeah, votes don't work. Like, like yeah. I've heard that that votes don't work, but have we actually tried it properly? Right. Have we right. tried it properly? People say right. we can't get bank loans. I don't know because I haven't gone to the bank to get a loan, but I have got a loan. Right. I have got. $35,000 loan when I went to get a loan, right? People say, mm-hmm. and I said to someone, I said to a guy one time, I said on social media, I said, who who destroyed your credit? Was it you or was it the white man? And he stopped mm-hmm. and was like, him. Because right. my credit was it was good. And my my credit was good by accident because I just paid my bills in time. I just did their stuff. <laughs> and I didn't know. I didn't I didn't have no financial knowledge knowing that, okay, those things you was doing is what was giving you the um, good credit. Mm-hmm. you know. And I, my credit had reached 825 right? right it's not that now but it's gonna right. <laughs> right it's gonna but it's like it's it's like you know w- you know I, I just wish that people would spread my stuff like i was bad news mm. that i would like that's that's how i want people to spread my stuff like i was bad news like i did right. something scandalous spread it yeah. like that <laughs> you know? right, right, right. crazy 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 mm. all right so i guess before we wrap up Mm-hmm. The, the latest project, I know right now you're on tour, yeah. you know, doing the different screenings. Uh, matter of fact, before we wrap up, so you have the screenings in different theaters, 
right? Yeah. I know you just came from uh, overseas. You were in Africa. You was in, yeah. in England. Mm -hmm. Now you're doing the screening here in America. Now, mm -hmm. what's the process of getting your films in the bigger theaters? Okay, so me, again, it's a childlike mind. I always tell people I have the childlike mind. you got to be a child. And what I see is that, especially black folks, we restrict mm -hmm. ourselves when there's no restrictions. We have this thing okay. like, and this is what I hear, they won't let us. That's mm. you know, they won't let you. The white men right. are gonna let you. I'm like, <laughs> like, what? Right. Go like go beyond him, what you think. And when, when a lot of times when they think there's some blockage, there's really no blockage. You just have to be mm. adventurous. If we say, you know, like some people say, Oh, we are Moors. So if we were mm -hmm. Moors, the Moors were navigators, they travel. Travel, travel mm -hmm. outside of your comfort zone. Travel. Me, I'm right. gonna travel. I, I tra Listen, I got one actor. I'm gonna go Greece. I'm gonna go Japan and shoot. I'm gonna shoot. I'm gonna travel, right? right? right. So with me, I just go and find directly the company and say, "Hey, can I get this in there?" Like when I was in Jamaica, you know, there was an actor. There was a guy who had, who had a film that that played there called Destiny. I think he was. He lived in Canada. I was mm -hmm. just like, oh, how did you get your um, movie in there? And he's like, oh, you know, I'll give you the information to contact the um, movie theater. And I contacted mm -hmm. him. I sent it to him. And I got Diary for Badman to play in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. Okay. That, now with Zambia, I I had direct access to, you know, I, 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 I had, you know, like, how do I get there? How do I get to talk to the people on that? So the company is based in South Africa. So mm -hmm. I spoke with them. And then they looked at the project. They said, well, they have to look at the project and see if it's like it has potential to do anything. I'm, right. And I'm like, they're going to see this project and they're going to, it's going to, it, it has that, right? right? So they see and they're like, okay, yeah. And so I got a situation with them, which is, it's only going to be playing in Zambia for now, right? Which is mm -hmm. a two week run. But if there's a high demand for it, then it'll go to four weeks. Okay. Now, um, so they're going to put marketing in there to push it. And then, the game is to make it do well, so good in the Zambia that I can now say to them, can I get this in your other 21 territories in Africa? Right. Right. And so now I'm also talking with the, um, you know, so when I went to Africa, you know, I was able to talk, you know, go to studios and stuff like that and get access to like the networks over there. So I'm asking now the networks, um, you know, um, so I'm, I'm just this close now to, to talking to the people that deal with the the, the, the um, TVs and streaming because I want to entertain yeah. them. Everybody's saying go to Netflix, Netflix. But I said, you know what? Let me entertain this first. You know, mm -hmm. Netflix is like the last resort, right? Okay. For me, right? A lot of people like like no Netflix can can stop your money because they're just going to give you a set price, and you know, and you ain't getting nothing after that. So, but I want mm -hmm. I want to see if I can license it in other territories myself, like right. myself. So I'm I'm talking with these like there's African magic, there's Mbizi magic, there's these different networks. So I know this project that I have is beautiful. It's you know it's African. It's something mm -hmm. that it's, it's a quality that they haven't seen on there. So right. my thing is to my thing is to get it on their network and build a relationship with them. So with this movie theater, once I put this in and it does good, I have another project that I'm gonna shoot in Zambia December, right? Okay. So then it then it's easier for me to now bring this and it'd be like okay we have a relationship. Your stuff did good then, so I can make it do good again, and I do it. Bring one another one, make it do good again, and I'm using the mm -hmm. same actors. So now those actors are becoming more famous within that country and with people, and now they have more value. And it's like now I can get a bigger thing. So it just right. it takes stages. So I, like I was saying at the premiere yesterday, and I, I, I'm, I'm gonna say this, and I say it boldly to any filmmaker, right? They're not on my level, right? The level that <laughs> I'm not, and I'm, I'm gonna be real with this, right? The level that the filmmakers are on, that they think I'm on with them, I'm, 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 it's not arrogance, it's just that they're not on my level. I'm, mm. I'm on a, a different level than them, right? right. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not Hollywood, I know what to gauge myself. I'm not Hollywood, but I can, I can do Hollywood with the budget. I can mm. do Hollywood with the budget, but I'm on a different level, right? And right. They, cannot, they cannot outwork me. I'm gonna, and they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna see. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna let people see the, my backstory. I'm gonna allow people now to, to understand how, because I've even stated here how I shot movies. Mm -hmm. I was working for, like, a lot of people think he's not working the job. I've been working a job. I've right. been working a job. So when people make excuses to me, it's like it's an excuse. I've been working a job. I'm a father. I have, I have children, children, right? That I right. pretend to, right? I leave work. I come and do my film, like, and I get it. I get it. I get it done. 
right? There's no excuses. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I know I have the ability. I'll, I'll, I'll work. There's, there's, I haven't seen anybody that's going to outwork me. They're, they're not right. there. They're not, I don't, they're, they're not, they might be, they might be 10. That person that's going to outwork me might be 10 years old right now. And when they get into their teens, they might <laughs> be that. They might be that one. But even a brother that I used to live with, mm -hmm. who you know, you know, P, you know, P, right, I, right. I, say, I say his name, right? You know, um, brother Polite, I used to live with him. And that brother's a worker, no matter what. He could work. He has a work mm -hmm. ethic. He has a work ethic, right? And nobody else can keep up with him. And the only person who could keep um, moving with him was me while mm -hmm. having a job. And he used to be like, damn, you have a job and you're the only one that can keep up. So he knows mm -hmm. without the job, I can, mm -hmm. I, I, I'd be further. I, 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 I can work out working. You know, because I'm, right. I'm, 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 he's not working, and I'm staying. <laughs> you know, I'm staying here with him right. because I have, I have a crazy work ethic, and in my mind, right. it's on my web, my website. I say when I start a project, I'm actually trying to finish the project today. So when I start writing, I'm, I'm the type of energy that I'm putting out is that I want to finish it today because I got other things I want to do. So I'm, I really want to finish it today. Yeah. And I put that type of energy in, and so when I say I'm going to outwork people, is that you're going to see me putting out a lot of stuff, right? And how I outwork everybody is that my stuff is gonna be better quality. It's gonna be better quality, better stories, mm -hmm. and consistent, just enough. And this is how I'm gonna brand general films because once you see my movies, then you understand, okay, general films. Last movie I saw of general films was good. Right. Next movie I saw was good. So now I'm building trust with people. They're gonna trust mm -hmm. the name Denver Films. So when they see Spielberg, they'll trust Denver Spiel Films. So if they see Denver Film project pop up, they say, "Oh no, that guy, that guy, they make they make good movies." So they're gonna entertain it. So I become, I become the name. I become the brand, right? right. Because you know, and then the actors that I have, like Douglas Ross, they become a brand because every time they right. think about Doug, Kanisha, Tanuke, these different actors. They think about dinner and films because we're going to keep rotating. And that's the name. I realize that's all it is. I just got to dominate and outwork everybody. I got to outwork everybody with quality material. And I have the quality. I have the know-how. I have the stories. The stories that I have coming, mm -hmm. I like I tell people, I have tunnel vision. People say, don't be tunnel vision. I am tunnel vision. I look like this. So I can't <laughs> see what's on my left and my right. I can't see what's up and down. I don't care what filmmakers are doing. I don't care what movies are. I really don't even watch the new movies because mm -hmm. I don't want to be influenced as right. yet. So I don't watch them. Right? I watch mm -hmm. them later. I don't watch things where everybody is watching them. I watch it in my own time, right? right. And I don't want to be influenced by anything. I don't just because these type of movies are are doing good. I don't run over there and say, "Oh, let's make, let me make that." Right. I do this because I want to do it. It's because I love doing it, and I'm gonna. Put, I'm, I'll make my own lane. I'll make my right. own lane. So the movies I have coming. They, they, people will understand soon. They're going to understand. Like, when people see, I know people have seen, when they see Genoma, they're going to understand who I am. People are going right. to understand. Other filmmakers are going to understand who I am. Right? They're right. going to understand who I am. There's another brother. There's a brother in Brooklyn that I'm going to be working with. He's a filmmaker. Um, he's on Dame Dash. And he reached out to me. And he was just like, we've been working with the same actors. And he was asking, like, who's helping him? And they'll be like, nobody. Right? And he's like, why? Why is nobody helping him? Right. And he reached out to me on Instagram and we talked on the phone. I have his number. His name is Joey. His name is Joe. He has, um, 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 he's done a few movies and he has, um, um, on Amongst Thieves. Mm -hmm. He said, brother, you know, like, you come on my set and assist, you know, do whatever, you know, assist. And I was just like, and me and him think alike. So there's like minded people. So I'm like, oh, there's other people that think, you know, think alike, right? And, um, mm -hmm. there's a movie that, I was thinking about doing, but I was thinking of as doing it as a post. Um, what do you call it? Post. You no, know, when the world is destroyed, you know, apocalypse, right? Yeah. <laughs> there's a movie that I wanted to do that way, and there's a movie that he wanted to do, but it's in the past. It's the same movie. It's mm. dealing with the same character, but and then he came to me saying that you know he was thinking like, who can he do this movie with? He said, there's no other filmmakers that's gonna do this movie that's bold enough to do it. And he was like, I don't know films. Mm -hmm. And so there's a movie. That movie project would take like about ten million to do, but it's a, it's a, it's a thing that we can work on and and do. And right. and we're the right guys to do it. We're we're definitely the right guys to to do it. That's and um, yeah. So expect you know I got I got stuff that I shot already. Chronicles of Bullethead, which are stories 
based on my life that I shot and I'm going to be bringing um I'm still editing that one and that okay. one's on sci-fi that one is sci-fi that one is about UFOs <laughs> there was a UFO experience okay sounds crazy but there was like 20 people there was 20 of over 20 of us that experienced this thing in England and um no. the facts are there when you say it, it's an interesting project interesting project okay 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 so for the uh for the, the latest project the one that's out now that you that again that you're currently promoting where yeah. can people go to find get more information um oh you know with the movie on facebook you're gonna get the most um information on there general films you know i'm begin to let information out on there it's gonna be out um october 14th in the uh, okay. new metro arcades in zambia it could be out. I'm probably. I've, I've also submitted it to AMC, um, independent. AMC allows independent movies for you to to select certain theaters that you want to screen your movie. Right. <laughs> I've selected New York, Atlanta, um, I think um, Houston, and maybe Chicago. Okay. And I've filled in the I've filled in the requirement application form, you know. And but for okay. them, it, it can take up to six weeks for them to get back up to you. Okay. I say, I say, let me submit it and see, you know. If I can get that situation, um, if not, then I may have to just like, you know, talk to some movie theaters and see if I can get a deal with a fifty, a, a split with them. If not, then I might have to just rent the theaters out myself and do it that way. I prefer to get a, a deal with them, you know, a, a 50 fifty split or whatever, or, you know, 45, 50, 55 split, and be able mm -hmm. to um, get it out there. Because again, once people see the movie, they they they'll like it. They like it. That's that's you know, you know. People coming to see it, they like the movie. There's, there's like, there's not a, you can't deny it, yeah. right? You won't deny it. You know, it's not perfect, but you won't deny what you watch, right. watched, and you're gonna be impressed with what you see. You're gonna be really impressed with what you see, you know. And understanding my my production team in Zambia was six of us: me, a camera lady that I trained, Shanae, Cook, mm -hmm. um, my mic person, Paul Cruz. Uh, James, uh, James Chikonge, if I'm saying his name right, my, my, I have some Zambian sons out there, right? Um, Yami and Matite, six of us, and it's mm -hmm. beautiful. I don't like, I don't want a big production crew. I don't, I don't okay. think, you know, maybe I need that later, but I like the small crew. Things work better for me at this stage. Yeah, 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 cool. But yo, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. Any information. Again, if you want to reach out to the brother, his information, his information is right here on the screen. Uh, social media is at Denaran Films, or go to the website, uh, denaranfilms.com. All right? All right? As always, man, yo, thanks for coming on and sharing your knowledge. You know, I look forward to seeing what you got coming out in the future. Peace. Thank you. All right, peace. Peace. Generation, Generation wealth, 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 wealth.